New Zealand in the 1990s. He's a very strong advocate of New Zealand as a location and also of New Zealanders as being involved in crew. Um, he was also he's produced several films, um, and including The World's Fastest Indian, which starred Sir Anthony Hopkins. So uh, Murray will share with you his thoughts around New Zealand as a location and New Zealanders being involved with film. So as I um, just get um, started from, from me first, and I'll just give you a, a short outline of what Tourism New Zealand has been doing to leverage The Hobbit over the last 12 months. So firstly, um, the world's eyes have been on New Zealand, and, and we are a small country, and we shouldn't be ashamed of that, but we are a small country, we're geographically isolated, um, and a lot of that gives us positive, um, gives us positive because of people have to venture to get here, have an adventurous spirit, and there is a, a lot of cachet about coming to New Zealand. But that does mean we have to take advantage of the world's, when the world's eyes are on us, through things like film, and particularly The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings in previous years. So through the Hobbit movies, it's allowed New Zealand to highlight us as a great place to visit, a great place to do business, and lastly, and obviously, a great place to produce film. And what we've been doing at Tourism New Zealand and with the rest of the New Zealand Inc. agencies is to take that attention and use it to our advantage. When we first were starting to look at what the opportunity around the Hobbit trilogy was, uh, we knew we were starting from a really good base. If we look at past research, we know that through the Lord of the Rings and also the great advertising that's been done over the past decade, it really has cemented New Zealand as having a perception of stunningly beautiful landscapes and a place that you can come to and enjoy. What we want to be able to do through the film is to add to that so that we can build on those, those landscapes, the locations, the natural beauty, but really show that there's a lot that you can do within New Zealand and that those locations aren't hard to get to, that they're incredibly accessible. And if we look back to 2004, which was after the Lord of the Rings trilogy, we knew that there was a huge opportunity. Of the visitors that were here in 2004 and that they were interviewed in a departure survey, 87% of them said they were aware, aware of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, but more importantly for us as the tourism destination, that it was filmed and made in New Zealand. 6% of them said that the Lord of the Rings was one of the main reasons for visiting. And 1%, well you might say 1% small, but it is still significant, said it was the main reason for coming. And we can actually equate that to a, a spend of 33 million. So when we look at back at 2004, when the announcement came that The Hobbit was going to be filmed in New Zealand, we knew it was an opportunity that we had to take advantage of. And what we wanted to do is we really wanted to say that Middle Earth is New Zealand and that what you do see in the movies, what you saw in Lord of the Rings, and what now people have seen through film one, you may think that, that, that those locations are made through CGI or aren't in fact real, that the backdrop is real, and they are actually locations in New Zealand that as a visitor you can get to. So we've done that through 100% Middle Earth, 100% pure New Zealand. And what's been really important as we've rolled that out over the past 18 months is that that is an idea that's, provo that's provided us a platform to go through our paid, earned and owned assets. So as the opportunities have come up, we've had a really strong paid campaign. We've then uh, supported that through media visits, the media that have come down for the film and also attracting our own media down so that we've got good editorial going through um, both print broadcast online and social and then as we've created that that preference that desire the call to action is to newzealand.com and our social assets where we can really build on how to experience New Zealand and how to get to to the locations so that has all really come through and in, into three three main stages and we'll I'll quickly go through pre-premiere the actual premiere and then what we've done over the last few months so in terms of pre-premiere activity a key component of that has been our international media programme and it's been amazing since Lord of the Rings and as the build up and the announcement of The Hobbit how much interest there is or what um, The Hobbit gives us in terms of a pitch idea or a hook for media to come down. And just a few examples here of the coverage we got prior to the film release. Lonely Planet um, with a circulation of 62,000 had a 14 page spread. The Daily Telegraph um, with a circulation of almost half or just over half a million. Um, We've also had the Telegraph Online, which has a, a larger um, distribution or a reach of 750,000. So without The Hobbit, without that hook, it would be really challenging for us to continue to get good coverage for New Zealand. We then 
to build up to the, the film premiere through our marketing communications team, we produced a stunning television commercial which has really provided the backbone for our paid coverage over the past um, 12 months. So Cameron, if we could just play the TVC, please. Your journey starts beneath southern skies where glacier and ocean meet. A land where giant eagles once guarded the skies, where creatures dwell in ancient caves, where streams that run hot feed rivers that run cold, and where warrior princesses know how to warm your heart, where wizards turn water into wine, and where the people of the land can fly. Where sea creatures walk on land And where you can play on mountains Protected by gods It's a place that will forever keep you under its spell Traveller, your dreams are waiting So what we're doing through this activity, um, along with along with our display work and online, is to really build the preference for New Zealand as a destination. And we've been able to do that through taking a little bit, before the film came out, a little bit of that fantasy and talk about New Zealand as a place to visit. And then as you can see, as we go through at the bottom of the screen here, really bring in some more of those fantasy elements through the, um, our, our partners at Weta Digital, who are, sorry, Weta Workshop, who were able to really bring the film to life through our work. And, and, it, and it's really important that we do test this work to ensure that it is having an impact or resonates with our potential visitors. And in the, new, in the US market, when we tested the television commercial with them, 78% um, said when they saw that, that it motivated them um, it motivated them to think about New Zealand as a place for a holiday. So backing that up with our partner messages, we know that it has impact and resonates with them. We then moved on onto the premiere activity, um, and through the partnership that we were able to form with the filmmakers, with Wingnut, and with Warner Brothers, we were able to put and in, in, in pitch to the media a joint program around the premiere. And that was really important for us, for New Zealand, so that when the media were down here viewing the film for the first time, we were able to uh, infuse New Zealand messages within that. We saw around about 100 international media down in New Zealand and some really big players that have been on our target list for a long time. And without the movie, we haven't been able to attract them here. So people like um, NBC from the, United, from, from the US, we had TF1, we had CTV, T4, Channel 7, 9 and 10 out of Australia. So there's three networks out of Australia here at the same time. And also over 30 print and media outlets from New Zealand and Australia. When we looked at that all together, that reach, the people who could see the coverage about New Zealand over the week and then leading up to the release of the film was hundreds of millions. And yes, they saw great, great footage, great reviews of the film, but they were left with no doubt that that film was made in New Zealand by smart, talented New Zealanders and also about the locations that they could visit. And the coverage that we got from a tourism viewpoint equated to almost 25 million equivalent advertising value. And the investment we put in that, the return on that, is phenomenal. We also wanted to really make sure that the media who were here knew that there was tourism product available and that if visitors did come down, there were locations they could visit. So with the help of the filmmakers and Warner Brothers, we hosted a day event at Hobbiton Film, at, at the movie set. So with over 80 international and New Zealand media there, guided tours and the exclusive interviews with the, with the cast, and particularly the dwarfs, it meant that we got, again, amazing coverage for the film. But what they did talk about and they raved about was this location, that it wasn't a film set, it was real, it was set in rural New Zealand and a great, a great experience for potential for travellers when they come down. Um, we also used that opportunity to uh, launch a new product at the Hobbiton um, set, which is the Green Dragon, which is the replica pub with its own, own brew. And if you haven't been there, I really do suggest you go. It's a fantastic place. Um, and what we have seen through the, the Hobbiton movie set with, with Russell and the team who own, who, own, who own the set there, they are now getting in excess of 150,000 visitors per annum through, through the set. So the media coverage, um, and then to support that, NewZealand.com 
because what we're trying to do through all this coverage is attract potential visitors to right raise preference, but importantly, um, use that interest for, for them to actually secure that New Zealand holiday. So through NewZealand.com, we ensured that we had really strong, what we'd call Hobbit heavy content, looking at all the new locations within the, within the film and showing how you can get them, pulling out the assets, the cast, the crew comments that we've been able to use because of the partnership with Warner Brothers. And when we look at um, that, that content on the site, really high engagement from users with over 13 pages viewed per visit. And that means that it's incredibly high quality content and engaging for those potential visitors. Also supported at that time, we wanted to bring, bring the, the film to life through some activations. And through uh, working with Auckland International Airport, we had an installation there that over the time that's been up, the total views will be in excess of a million, a million walkthroughs. So again, really welcoming people to New Zealand, home of Middle Earth, 100% Middle Earth, 100% pure New Zealand. Um, on the day of the, the premiere, November the 28th, we had our team from Tourism New Zealand out at the airport uh, stamping passports. So along with your New Zealand stamp, you got a stamp that said, welcome to, to New Zealand, home of Middle Earth. A great little souvenir for people who were here for the, for the premiere. And through um, Television One, we worked with the breakfast show and we had the news reader, sorry, the weather presenter over, this, over the morning's news progressively be dressed like a, an elf, and then he delivered the last, the last weather forecast in Elvish, which he'd learnt from the speech coach from, um, from the film. So again, really authentic content. And why did we do that? It, wasn't, it was great for New Zealanders to see, but we did that, so we had amazing rich content that we could syndicate with the media who were here. And it was picked up by, by the BBC, the Daily Mail, the Sydney Morning Herald, MSN and CTV. So really worth our while to work with our, our news, our media partners here to have great content that can be picked up and take our story further. And through that, cut, that broadcast, we showed the locations, so we had a weather forecast, temperature all real for the summer, but we showed the locations of where you could visit that were in film one. All of that work through the media activity, the event at Hobbiton, those activations, meant we had amazing content that we could use over the premiere week in our social channels. Um, and so we used all of that content. We had a guest curator for the week who was travelling around the country, taking who was a curator for our page, so that, that through the premiere week, we were really focused on, on the Hobbit film. But through those activations and the media who were here, we were able to, to, to tap into their reach. So Anne Curry had her passport stamped. She tweeted that. Um, we had Debbie from ETV who, who retweeted the, the weather forecast. And we had Sunrise who tweeted that they were going to be at Hobbiton the next day which was the event where, we, where they were interviewing the dwarfs. So we had content that could then be reused through our social channels. And it hasn't stopped since the premiere. The interest, particularly from media, hasn't, hasn't continued. And we're now able to get them into the locations from film one. And we're already seeing outstanding results. We had a press trip down here with Warner Brothers for the lead up of the DVD release. So we've got these little peaks and spikes right throughout the year that we can continue to, to sell The Hobbit story. A couple of them here which coincided with the release of the DVD in the UK market. And, and the DVD release, which has been phenomenal for, for the film, but also for us, because it does feature a six-minute piece, behind-the-scenes exclusive footage that Sir Peter Jackson did film for us as he was filming the trilogy. And that's been pulled together, and it's become an amazing clip for us to use that has the cast and crew comment, because we all know that word of mouth is so important for the promotion of our destination. So having the cast who were here living for 12 to 18 months talk about their experiences, talk about the locations and what they did is really exposure that we, we, we can't buy. And we look forward to sharing that with you um, um, shortly when Matt um, talks through the opportunities with film and tourism. But everyone always says to me, that's great, you've had a great relationship with Warner Brothers, you've done great work, it all looks nice, but what's it actually, what's, what's the return, what has it done? We've seen four things so far since the premiere. Um, leading up in December, December the 13th, a great gong for Tourism New Zealand and the team that were involved with the development of the, the campaign. It won the, travel, the, the world's best travel campaign for 2012. That was the first thing we saw. 
through our target market, Active Considerers, the second thing we saw was this increased awareness of the film. Um, and I know it's a little bit hard with, this, with the, the sun here, but you can see from December 12 through December a real sharp awareness of the trilogy in the film that it was produced in New Zealand. So it said to us that all of this work that we'd been building up on around the premiere was beginning to get traction. They knew that the film was coming out, which is great, but more importantly for us in tourism, they knew that it was filmed in New Zealand. From, from November, December, January, February and March, we've had record arrivals to our website, newzealand.com. So what we were able to do was that interest, that preference, that exposure that we'd created of the film was then beginning to make a difference to, to the visitation on newzealand.com. Um, we have had a record 12 months, up 19% year on year for the year in March, with over 12 million visits to the site. But importantly what we saw was we were driving paid, paid traffic to NewZealand.com, which is great, but we also saw a 23% increase over that premier time of our organic traffic. So that traffic of people actually seeking out, making their own searches to find uh, material on New Zealand, the Hobbit, Middle Earth. So a real interest that was turning into preference and traffic for us to convert to New Zealand. The third thing we saw is you'll know Tourism New Zealand doesn't actually sell anything, so we have to look for measures that says, you know, is our activity working? So we use preference. We try to get active considerers, as many as possible, to have New Zealand as their first or second destination of choice. And we were really happy to see some of these trends happen from December onwards. So you can see, we, you know, we're, we're tracking along, there's some quite good preference for New Zealand, but at each of those boxes at the premier time, you can see a, a slight lift in preference. And importantly, a market that we saw um, back after Lord of the Rings, we had the biggest market share we've ever had at just at 1%. We started to see the US really move. So they'd been tracking in the low 40s, straight after the premiere, the preference for New Zealand shot up to 52. Um, and it stayed at 52 for January, February, and it's just dropped slightly to 49. So we're still holding an increased preference in our core key markets. And as you'll know from the visitor arrivals that were released on, on Monday, we are beginning to see that turn into actual arrivals to New Zealand. So in March, a 13% increase of international arrivals into New Zealand, and also an increase in February. But if we look at those March figures, what's really promising for us there is that increase from the US market, 24% arrivals. Um, we are, you know, and, and, and talking to our operators and talking to our partners up there, we've seen incredibly strong forward bookings as well. So we've seen the movie, we've leveraged it, we've got really strong, authentic content that, that drives the New Zealand message. We've seen that come through in our arrivals to NewZealand.com. We've seen it come through in our preference, and now we're beginning to see it come through in our arrivals. So that's a, a really strong signal to us that New Zealand is seen as Middle Earth. It does create us a platform to tell the New Zealand story and to convert that into, into New Zealand arrivals. So at that point, I'd like to hand over to Matt. Um, or actually, first, what we'll do is we'll show the, the feature, which is what was uh, produced by Sir Peter. It's an amazing piece, um, and I do apologise. The screen here with the sun on it isn't going to do it justice, but very happy to provide you a link to that to, to, view, to view after this. So, Cameron, if we can just play the, the feature, please. I could have spent this entire shoot on location. We saw so many incredible places. I know I'm a Kiwi, but I have to say, I cannot imagine making these films anywhere but this country. Amazing. Wherever we went, it was an extraordinary experience. And here we were, making a film. Go, go, go! A New Zealand film, The Hobbit. It's been thrilling to go back and, and go up and down both the main islands of New Zealand. And we began in Hobbiton. When we first discovered the location, Hobbiton, 
back in 1998, there were three geographical things that made us choose it as Hobbiton. We need a distinctive tree set in rolling hillside, ideally with a little lake and a hill behind the tree rising up to give us the position of being in. It looked like Hobbiton, you know, it just looked like a place where people actually lived and people worked. The highlights have definitely been watching Hobbiton from the air, which is something that I don't think was really done on Lord of the Rings. Seeing it like this kind of living model village is just extraordinary. The original Hobbiton set was built out of polystyrene, and even though we had to take it away, which I thought it was a shame, it actually wouldn't have survived. Of course, doing The Hobbit now, it gave us the ability to rebuild Hobbiton out of permanent materials. And it's been made to last out of materials that aren't going to deteriorate, and we can carry on showing people what's involved in making a movie. People who've seen the films can go and relive them by, by actually knocking on uh, Bilbo's door. Or you can just look and see. There's no, there's no having to finish the illusion. It's just here. Camp here for the night. Philly, Killy, after the ponies. Denise bluffs is that volcanic activity has brought the rock up out of the ground. I mean, there's these huge shafts of rock. It looked like something from Jurassic Park. You can't do any helicopter shots coming over from the back because yeah, it's behind it's just ply and scaffold. But it'll, it'll all come out, I think, in a couple of weeks. And then there's going to be a permanent one put in in place for the, as a tourist attraction. The beautiful rock formations, cliffs, and then down, down, down into the most incredible bush. And it seemed ancient. There were lots of moss on all the great rocks. It seemed incredibly old. It's a lot of native bush in that area. It's a stunning location. In this area, which is the Twizel area, we managed to get a bunch of shots up on a hill above Lake Bukaki. It was a beautiful vista, like it was long, wheaten-coloured kind of grass, and we'd be running through it and being chased by wags. The landscape is really interesting geographically. We're being chased by these terrible monsters. <laughs> It's just everything you could hope for in an epic adventure. I took a photo that I sent to some friends. Dwarves on vacation. And they refused to believe that this...